thank you for tuning in to episode 65 of Who Gives a Dram. Um, we got a special episode today. I've got a very handsome man here to my left. Um, and we are going to talk some nonsense. We're going to drink some whiskey. And we're going to have some fun. Uh, before we get into the episode, though, you guys, you know, uh, best way to support the show. Make sure you're subscribed on all platforms. Uh, rating, review on iTunes, all the good stuff. Tony, you know what I'm talking about, man. Sure you know will. the grind. I sure you know will. the grind. Um, and also, uh, I got some new merch that came out. I'm wearing it right now. You can't see the back, but it's got the Who Gives a Dram logo. Uh, go to my Instagram. You can get the link to get my new merch. 35 bucks for a sweatshirt. Full transparency, I think I make less than $5 in every sweatshirt. I put the price down as low as I could possibly go. So this is all just for people. I want to use people as like billboards. It's like, it's not about money. It's about getting the word out there. So if you want a sweatshirt, if you want to support the show, uh, you can visit the link in my bio on Instagram or go to thegreatvimemedia.com, www.thegreatvimemedia.com. And it's right in the shop there as well. So, uh, but without further ado, again, a very special guest this week, you guys. Um, this guy is someone I haven't haven't really known each other for a very long time, but long enough to know that we got the same humor. We got the same, you know, we enjoy the same things. He's a baseball guy. I'll let him get, get into that. Um, and he does his own podcast. So it's, it's really the, the best of everything that I enjoy as well. Um, I got my brother, Tony on Tony, what's going on, man. How you doing, buddy? Thanks for having me on here. And uh, I'm glad we could both wear our, our matching backwards white hats. We planned this. We've been, we planned this for <laughs> two and a half weeks. Yeah. Yeah. We, said we, look we both amazing. got a, I, I wasn't planning on trimming my beard. Actually, I probably was planning on trimming my beard, but I, I wasn't, let's say it for, or in, in this case, because uh, you're, I, I feel so emasculated with your glorious mustache now. One day I'm going to jump on, it's going to be gone. And I don't know, I don't know how it's going to be received. It's going to either go over really well because I'm going to look uh, like I'm 13 and a half or, I'm going to look uh, hideous. So 19. we'll see. Well, you don't think you'd look hideous if you look 13 and a half with your, with your wrinkles and everything like that. Like a 41 year old, 13 year old. Was it Benjamin Button? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't, I, I'll be upset. I'll honestly be upset when that mustache goes. I, I, it's glorious in all its glory. If you're not watching the YouTube uh, podcast right now, switch over to YouTube just to take a look at this gentleman's mustache. <laughs> um, I appreciate that. Oh, dude, no problem. Uh, but yeah, Tony, I appreciate you coming on the show, man. Um, why don't you tell the people that are listening a little bit about yourself, what you do, and and who you are? Um, yeah. So I coach baseball. I'll start there. Um, yeah. so I coach baseball, and I started a started a podcast. Um, probably need some rebranding. I think I've said that before. Um, my initial kind of thought was like marry the whiskey and baseball thing. And yeah. so I went with something that like fits for baseball. It's called barrel proof baseball. Uh, but I think the like vibe that it kind of gives off is that it's more geared towards baseball, um, which I enjoy talking with people in baseball quite a bit, except that like I do it every single day. And so it's right. actually probably more enjoyable to, to talk about people, talk with people that are in whiskey. Um, so maybe a little bit of rebranding is going to be necessary in the near future, but you know, we'll see, uh, we'll see how that goes, but yeah, it's a baseball coach and, and, uh, and then trying to have my podcast and enjoy talking, talking whiskey and, uh, and chatting with some fine folks like yourself. Oh man, you're going to make me blush. Oh, that was the what? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm basically always blushing. I think I got like rosacea or something like that. My face is always red and, um, it, it, it doesn't go well with my, with my, my pasty Irish skin, especially in the summer. Your, your youthful exuberance. Yes. I'm glowing, glowing and pasty. There you go. <laughs> um, <laughs> so with, uh, I guess we'll start with, uh, with baseball kind of, you know, you've been, you've played, you're coaching now. What's, what's the journey like in that end? So, you know, it's like everybody, that didn't make it to the big leagues as a player. Like you always wish you would have played longer. Um, you know, I didn't play, played in college, uh, played division one college baseball. And then, and then 
uh, didn't get an opportunity to sign professionally after that. So went out and ended up playing a little bit of independent ball um, in the Midwest. And that was short lived due to an injury. And I got into coaching like right away and kind of still try to play. I still tried to, you know, have my comeback tour for a few years and, and it just never really like um, amounted to much. Um, but I got into coaching and I really enjoyed it. So kind of got in, um, got, got in coaching high school baseball. Uh, my first job was at my, my alma mater coaching the freshman team. Uh, and then the, the following year I went up to Washington and I was a head high school coach up there and uh, for one year and then came back and, and stay, went back to my old high school for another four years. And while I was there, I was, you know, doing my master's and, um, you yeah, know, working and making sure people didn't steal stuff from Best Buy. Um, and nice. once I did, did the six years of high school baseball, I got into to college baseball. That was kind of my goal. And so went and coached junior college um, for four years. And, and during that time, I was, I was doing collegiate summer ball. So I went out and coached in the Cape Cod League. Um, I, I was a head coach up in the Alaska League. Um, so I got to see quite a bit. I, I got to go coach in Germany for I spent about three months in Germany, um, mm. but really wanted to get, get into division one baseball. So I ended up getting a chance to go to UNLV and I was there for a year and then spent three years at the university of New Mexico. So I've been moving around quite a little bit. And then I got a job with the Dodgers, um, in 2017 and, um, you know, it was really a really great opportunity. Um, you know, got to manage, got to have a, a really a lot of different roles with the organization. Um, and then just this past year, I took a job with the Detroit Tigers. So um, I'll be with our AAA affiliate in Toledo, Ohio this year um, as the bench coach there um, with my, my first year with the Tigers. So it's going to be a, an adjustment. It's going to be a little change, um, you know, being from the, the levels that I was at to where I'm at now. Yeah. Um, but it's going to be an absolute blast. We've got a, a huge group of incredible staff. Um, you know, people that really want to like get to work and, and do some stuff. And yeah. we got a really good group of, of players. We got a special group of players. So and guys are really excited and, and they like the direction the organization's going in. So it's very, we're very optimistic and excited. Well, I kind of, you got to say that. <laughs> That's something you got to say, right? Because you're not going to say you guys aren't optimistic. There's people, there's teams that probably aren't. And like we can, you can come on and go like, yeah, I mean, I think we're going to be really good in the back of your mind going, Oh my God, we're going to suck. And <laughs> I, I mean, I've, I've, I've been there in, in college baseball yeah. when, you know, you talk it up and in the back of your mind, you're like, well, we, like we'll be okay, but we don't really pitch. We don't hit very well. And our defense sucks. So, right. but you give the sound bite, but, but there are, there are probably organizations that um, are probably not happy with the direction that they're going in, you know, whether it's Man. starting in the major league level or they're, you know, the, the depth in the minor leagues is just not what others are. Um, you know, there's the Dodgers. We were really fortunate when I was there, you know, we had obviously an outstanding major league team, but yeah. the minor league system was incredible. We we're always one of the top minor league systems in, in, in professional baseball. Um, mm -hmm. We're getting a ton of players moved up to the big leagues. We were getting guys, that were in trades getting sent to other organizations and then making major league debuts with those organizations. Um, but you know, one of the things with the tigers is they had some down years. And I think with those down years, they were able to pick high in the, in the draft um, yeah. and get some really, really exciting players. I mean, there's, I think we've got like two guys in the top five prospects in baseball. And like, there's a lot of guys wow. to be really, it's really insane. excited about. <laughs> yeah. It's nuts. So you, you've got a lot of guys to be really excited about. And so when you, when you get to go to work, knowing that you're going to be working with guys that are going to have an impact at the major league level, not just like hopefully get a call up and be there for a little bit. Um, but guys that are going to hopefully like go to the major leagues and make an impact up there. Like that's fun, man. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's incredible. Is, is the, uh, is the pressure you feel if any, <laughs> I'm sure you do feel pressure, you, you know, because you're passionate about it. You want to do well. What, how is it different than when you play? Um, and I know you, you said, you know, you played collegiate, you played division one, which is obviously just as close as you get to the big yeah. leagues. Um, what's that, what's that like that pressure? What's the difference? I think the pressure is for like, if I was a player and I, you know, went out the night before, uh, didn't have myself ready to play, um, just didn't, didn't really perform well. Um, like I had nobody but myself to be upset with, you know, I could yeah. look back at my habits or look back at, you know, what my decisions were. 
And it's like, gosh, I really wish I wouldn't have done that because maybe I would have been a little bit more aware of what was happening today and, and a little more with it and, and, and locked in and prepared. And, um, but you know, at the end of that, like you can kind of live with that. I think as a coach, it's different because like you have other people that are depending on you. You don't want to let those guys down. You know, you got guys that are going to yeah. be in the big leagues, um, very, very soon. And like, if they don't have the information that they need to go out and compete that I was supposed to provide for them, like that part sucks. Um, yeah. so that's, it's just kind of, I think I've been doing it for 18 years now. Um, and so like you get to a point where you, you just kind of know my job is to be pre prepared so that the players can take the information that I give them to go out and prepare. And at this level, you know, it's not, it's not me grabbing guys going, Hey, you need to work on this, this, and this, like, we're going to go out and we're going to do drills for five hours today. Like they're grown men they know what they need to do. Um, and so really it becomes just taking them through the stuff that, that they need and hopefully point out some things now and then that can uh, maybe change the kind of trajectory they're on or, or um, help them kind of make an adjustment a little bit sooner than they, they usually would. Right. Right. That's, I, I'm thinking as you're talking, isn't the Detroit Tigers, their single a short season in Connecticut. Is it the, um, I don't even know what they're called now. It used to be the navigators. So uh, they, got, they got, they got rid of minor league baseball went through this contraction a couple of years back. So there's no more of like the short season, low a, so to speak. Mm. Um, you've got like your, your affiliate team and then your, well, you have your low a team. Um, but they got rid of like the short season rookie ball. Um, okay. and they got rid of, they, it, there was a bunch of teams that, that were lost. Uh, I was actually going to manage a team in Ogden, Utah, um, that with the Dodgers and that was lost to contraction. So that's no longer there, but that was a short season mm -hmm. rookie ball team. But, um, now our, our, we have our low A's in Lakeland, Florida. Um, and we've got our high in West Michigan, double A's in Erie, and then triple A's in Toledo. That's, I could have sworn that and maybe it was, it, it was uh, a short season. It may, it that may have been played at a uh, Dodge stadium here in, uh, Norwich, which is probably, mm -hmm. 30 minutes down the road for me. I, I've actually played there in a lot of high school tournaments. Um, what, uh, so where does the transition come from? Like your coach in baseball. And I know we, like you and I have talked about this before. So, mm -hmm. but this is just more regurgi regurgitating it. The connection with baseball and then bringing that and bringing whiskey into that is, have <coughs> you always been into whiskey or is whiskey something that's like, because whiskey's not like a, a popular drink in baseball, I'd assume. I would assume, and I think you've even said this, it's like more wine and yeah, and beer. beer. Um, yeah, it, it's it's dependent on, on like your level, you know, for players' mm -hmm. standpoint. It probably you know depends on financially where you, where you're at. Like again, yeah. playing baseball in the middle of the summer, um, you want to have a cold beer at the end of the day. Fully get it. Um, but I think guys, you know, as guys were getting older and they're getting into the upper levels they would start to experience more quality wine. Um, yeah. And I think when that happens, it's very easy to get into. I just got hooked on bourbon. Um, I like whiskey. Mm -hmm. I like Irish whiskey. I like bourbon. Um, you know, I haven't gotten into scotch, but for me, it's nice because when the game's over, if I want to pour myself a whiskey, um, I can sit down and like, just, it's like, it slows you down. You know, you're not yeah. crushing beers. You're not, um, you burning up because it's, you know, hot and humid outside and, and you're putting down beers. Um, it's like you pour your whiskey, it kind of slows you down, you know, it just brings you back to earth a little bit. Um, you know, you can just kind of sit and relax and enjoy it. It's not just, yeah. you know, drink it and it's gone. Um, you know, you, you do like, you kind of slow down and, and enjoy yourself a little bit more. So, um, for me, like, and, and the other thing that I found was that, that there was just not as many people that were into it. So when you bring a bottle into the clubhouse and like share it after the game um, and guys that weren't into whiskey, tried it out and they're like, Hey, this is really good. Like, I mean, I brought, I remember I brought a bottle of blue note juke joint and mm -hmm. we shared it and we put it down and guys were like, man, this is incredible. Did the same with like a bottle of Eagle rare guys had never had Eagle rare. And so for most guys, like if you're not into whiskey, you probably only have like your standards that are out there. Your, you know, your Jack yeah. Daniels or a Jim beam or something that's just popular, maybe makers or, or Woodford, but. Uh, most people like just don't naturally branch out into those things. So for us who are into it, like makers or Woodford's probably not the first thing you're reaching for, but, but for a lot of people that aren't into it, like that might be for something someone, that they, uh, they really I forget enjoy. that all the time is like, 
like I would never reach for makers, but most people aren't like me and they're not. No. I, I saw that bottle kill. You you made sure every last drop was out of that too. You know, leave it. what are you drinking right now? This, uh, this is just Chattanooga. Um, this is the 91 proof. It's their Tennessee high malt. I really like this. Um, ah. Really, I got the 111 here just in case I need a little more. But um, <clears throat> yeah, I had I had um, their founder on my podcast and it was a blast. Like I, super cool guy, super knowledgeable. Um, yeah, I really really liked it. Yeah, yeah, I've heard such such good things about Chattanooga. I'm drinking and I showed you this, but a little old tub, a little old faithful. I knew we weren't going to review something today, so I wanted to drink something that uh, mm -hmm. I've already reviewed. I don't even remember what I gave old tub. Not bad though. I mean, it's not like the best, it's, it's not the best bottle and bond, but it's definitely mm -hmm. quality. Definitely quality. I, I have not had it. I heard just very like cinnamon bomb, but yeah, I haven't gone there. Not really cinnamon. It's got a little bit of the, the, the nutty profile from Jim Beam, like, yeah. and it, which I don't particularly like, but it's, it's not, I mean, at the end of the day, <laughs> at the end of the day, it tastes <coughs> like bourbon, you know, like it just, I'm not going to say no to it. The only thing I'll say no to is bookers i will say no to bookers okay so how do i word this i i'm not a jim beam fan i don't like the no, no i don't say i don't like the family um i don't like the whiskey. <laughs> just, i hate those people <laughs> i hate their family terrible people. um i i just i just don't like the whiskeys um mm. I, I i never like if it was jim beam or jack Daniels, it was always jack um yeah. I agree. Jim just tastes like the the cheap, you know, younger brother. Um, and then you start trying some of their other ones. And like, I don't really care for bookers. I know people are super excited about it. Um, and they go chasing all the new ones. And I bought a bottle of the pigskin last year just because it was there. And yeah. I was so underwhelmed. Um, I, I don't like bakers. Um, I don't like, yeah. I think... I think the worst whiskey that's ever been made is Basil Hayden's. I hate it. With it, <laughs> it's not good. It's not I good. It. I, I refuse to buy. I because when when Basil Hayden Toast got so popular last year, I wanted to buy a bottle so bad. Mm -hmm. Like I'm gonna review this on the podcast. It's gonna get a bunch of views because it's popular, and it's 80 proof. It's gonna mm -hmm. be easy, and I can just do it. And I just couldn't bring myself to pay. 50 60 70 dollars in no. some instance for an 80 proof toasted from basil hayden's nope. but i keep my bookers i don't even know which one it is but i keep it on top shelf because i bought it for 79 bucks and i knew that was a good price and i i remember i had it on thanksgiving and i this is no offense to jim beam at all if they're listening which i'm sure they are i mean this is the biggest podcast in the world they're um yeah, I'm just, they actually just texted me. Shit. Um, <laughs> I gagged drinking it. I straight up gagged drinking Booker's, um, whatever their most recent batch was in 2021 at that time. And um, I haven't drank it six since. So I put it on the top shelf and I actually had buddies over uh, the other day and they're like, let me get some of your top shelf whiskey. Because you're the whiskey guy. Show us something good. And I'm like, yeah, you want to know something good? Try that Booker's right there. Top shelf. Mm -hmm. It's in a it's in a nice wooden box. It's like it's like I pray, played up the price a little bit. It's like I was like, it's like 120 bucks. You got <laughs> this, guys. And they each had a big pour, and I'm like, all right, good. All yep. right, good. Cause I'm 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 a big believer, especially for 80 bucks. I'm not pouring anything down the drain. I refuse to pour no, anything down no. the drain. We I remember buying it in Alaska for about 50 bucks. Um years wow. ago. It was probably 2014. And uh oh no, God, it was like I was in high school. Oh God. Okay. Of course you were. Uh, <laughs> it was probably like 11 or 12 actually. And we bought it and, and, and we were in Anchorage and we drank it. And I, you know, it was quite hefty. Um, mm. and it was, it was fine. I mean, we probably put Coke in it at the time actually, but, um, I just don't like, I don't know. I, I can't I like those other flavor profiles that I get on board with. I think we talked about this before. Like I love wild Turkey stuff. Yeah, um, I prefer that way over anything from Jim Beam. By the way, anyone who's listening to this now, go watch Tony's episode on Bourbon Across America on uh, my other podcast, Bourbon with Friends. It's an all-time episode. It's hilarious. And we basically talk about everything that we're talking about now for the most part, but this is just on a different podcast. This is on my podcast. Oh. Um, what's the coolest 
and we're going to get more into whiskey in a little bit, I yeah. promise. But yeah. I want to know what the coolest moment in, I guess you could do, well, no, let's do your coaching. Mm -hmm. The coolest moment in your coaching, like in your tenure as a coach, whether it's like, like, um, a cool, you were at a game, you were coaching a game that something cool happened, or you like, you went out and hung out with like a, a huge star and you guys, you know, like shot the shit over whiskey or mm -hmm. something like that. What's like a cool, what's a cool story you can tell, you can tell us here and who gives a dream. <coughs> you know, I, I think from a coaching perspective, I, I really like you spend so much time with these guys and I've been at every level. So like seeing guys accomplish things and it sounds so cliche and it's like out of a coaching book, but um, you know, you start to see guys, especially now like that with, with social media, you know, you're able to keep up with guys a lot better than you were like at the beginning of my coaching career, you know, and you see guys who are um, obviously like you keep up with guys that continue their playing career. And so it's always fun yeah. when you see a guy that you coach that makes it to the big leagues, um, you know, or a guy that gets drafted that you were coaching in amateur baseball. Like that's obviously a blast. Yeah. Um but no, then you see like, you know, your former players who are like announcing their kids or they're getting married or, um, you know, they're getting this dream job or fireman or a police officer. Like um, th those are cool, man. Like you start to yeah. see the, the, the guys go through like these struggles through their life um, and, and, and achieve something, accomplish something that they've wanted to do. So uh, from a coaching perspective, like that's really cool. And there's moments like on the field um, that you that you can't take back like when you know a guy's been working really hard and and he has some success it's like man that's great like you you're really pulling for that guy and when he has success you're so excited for him and um it could be a just a game-winning hit it could be a, a big hit it could just be something that he's been working on um that finally you see it click and you see that look in their eyes like they got it yeah. um or understand like that's so cool um but yeah i mean and then off the field there's always you know always shenanigans um i i, I remember my roommate from college was playing in the big leagues and uh, with the Yankees. And we had an opportunity to go hang out with them after a game uh, when they were in Anaheim playing. And I had a couple of friends of mine with me and um, one guy, he had just got called up to the big leagues. It was his first big league call up and his dad was there and he was going around just hugging everybody. Um, I, I, we were, we were crushing Irish car bombs. He was so excited by the end of that. So baseball. The, oh, dude. <laughs> He's standing, baseball. The, the dad, the kid, the, the son who just got called up was back at the hotel. The dad was at one point standing up on tables and singing journey songs and ripping Irish car bombs with everybody. But, um, you know, that, that's fun. Like you just see a bunch of yeah. guys who are playing in a major league stadium and they're just having a good time and, and literally celebrating somebody else's uh, excitement. That, that was really cool. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's, that's, um, I mean, I wouldn't know. I'm not a dad, but I would assume when I would be that happy for my son as well. Sure. Yeah. You know, no doubt. Hundred percent. Playing for the Yankees is pretty. I mean, I mean, it's there's way cooler things in the world, like maybe hosting a podcast. But yeah, playing for the Yankees is is probably like definitely in like the thousand. This well, I would say like the top a thousand at least, yeah. maybe maybe top like five hundred coolest things you can do. Yeah, it's up there. It's Host up there. a podcast, have a mustache. Mm -hmm. Um, playing the big and leagues. playing the big leagues. Yeah, that's yeah. probably like three three cool things. You know, you. I mean, you basically do all three. So you're the you. You should replace the guy from uh, Modelo or uh, Dos Equis as the most interesting <laughs> man alive. <laughs> that's fair. That and just come at it with a whole totally different perspective. There's there's the there's the market that's um you know, for like the mass. And then there's the market for the, you know, like the white dudes that want to get into those Equis. That's you. <laughs> okay, I'll be that guy. I think you could do it. I'll, I'll be the baseball, coffee, whiskey guy. Baseball, coffee, whiskey. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out gotta, my head. Turn something's got to fall. Something's got to be, somebody's got to really want to be in one of those uh, niche areas, if you will. Yeah. There's a lot of people. What would you rather have? What do you, and give me an honest answer here or we don't lie here on the podcast. So you're not allowed to lie. You're con you can't, you signed a contract before you came. Okay. I don't know if you knew that, but um, if you lie, you got to give me a thousand dollars. If, um, would you, do you look for after a long, I say after a long day mm -hmm. or 
in the beginning of the day? Do you look forward more to a cup of coffee or a glass of whiskey? And given like it's a cup of coffee, maybe whenever you enjoy your coffee the most, and it's a glass of whiskey whenever you enjoy your whiskey the most. It's coffee. <clears throat> it's definitely coffee. Wow. Um, because when I wake up, I need coffee. Like it's coffee time. Um, I, I'm excited to enjoy my whiskey at the end of the day. But there's days at the end of the day that I don't have whiskey. Um, there is not a day that I don't have coffee. Well, that's so, not looking forward to it. That's an addiction. Yes. And I look forward to uh, satisfying that addiction. <laughs> mm-hmm. 100%. What kind of coffee? Do you make your own coffee? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a kind of a coffee snob. Um, you sure you sure you sure look like one. Yeah, I feel like I should have like a like a tattoo of a uh, like a French press or something on my forearm. Um, but uh, and, but, and yeah. a man bun. Well, yeah, do yoga poses. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like I'm a huge coffee nerd. Um, I, I've got like a subscription thing that I get. I, you know, it's it's called Bottomless Coffee, right? So people can like subscribe under my thing too, if they want, but they send you a bag of coffee and when it runs low, you like, they automatically send you another one. Um, my goal is definitely to start my own coffee brand, uh, which will just be basically like drop shipping, um, from some beans that I've sourced and and found that I really like, but, um, yeah, like the last couple of times trips I made to, made to Europe, we spent just, we spent more time in coffee shops. Um, than we did in, in any distilleries or bars or anything like that. Yeah. I mean, well, I, I don't know. Well, I guess there are distilleries in Europe, depending on where you were. I'm assuming you're in Ireland. We're in Ireland. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I don't know if I agree with that though, man. Like, don't get me wrong. I look forward to I coffee no matter what, mm-hmm. like no matter what morning I'm looking forward to coffee there's not every night. Like I don't drink every night. I don't drink whiskey every night. And it's like, there are some nights where I just don't look forward to it, but the nights I know I'm drinking whiskey. Yeah. And that usually is the nights I know. And I say I'm drinking whiskey. There are nights where I, I, I know I'm just going to be chilling in my apartment, throw on a movie, drink some whiskey. I look forward to those, but like the nights, like I know I'm going to go drink some whiskey and smoke a cigar at the cigar mm-hmm. bar. Like, I know I'm going to do that. Mm-hmm. I don't know if there's any better feeling than that for me. I get it. I told, I do get it because it's the same thing after a game. Like I want to sit down when I do my report, <clears throat> I want to sit down and have a glass of whiskey while I do it. Um, mm. Fully get it. But I do like, you know, when I'm making my coffee and I'm trying to find like ratios for my Chemex or my AeroPress that I really <laughs> like. Um, <clears throat> that I'm really happy with. Yeah. Like, it gets, it gets weird. It gets nerdy. Like you start to experiment with different grind sizes, different water temperatures, different times. That's, that's what you know, she so, said, by the way. Yes, she did. So then you're, you're looking at like how it changes the extraction of yep. the, of the coffee. And like, and it does like, <clears throat> you can have the same coffee and, and grind it at a different size or leave it in the water, like submerged for a longer time and get a totally different <laughs> flavor. So I will Do you nerd get- out on coffee. I see. I don't get tasting notes on coffee and I'll, and maybe it's, so what I do is I'm a big proponent of making your own coffee at home. Uh, but I, I use a Mr. Coffee and Mm I, you know, drip coffee, think what you may, you're a coffee snob. You might be judging me very hard right now, but I, um, I use Starbucks, French roast, dark roast every single day. There's no judging. It's whiskey. It's like whiskey. Don't judge. Just drink it. I I like I like a lighter medium roast because there's more caffeine in it. That's just me though. I did hear that. It doesn't, I maybe it probably does make sense. Like if you were to explain it to me scientifically, but it's like, when you think of it just off the cuff, it's like, wouldn't the darker roast have the more caffeine? Cause you, it's darker. You would think. It feels manlier, but it's, it's almost think about it. Like it's roasted longer, which burns it more, which burns out yeah. some of the caffeine. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I, I, just, I like the taste of the dark roast uh the french roast and um <laughs> but i don't get any like tasting notes out of it i've tried too like i, I feel like i'm I'm okay at picking out tasting notes and whiskey when i'm trying so i've tried to sit down in the morning and take out like what am i really tasting with this but maybe it's because it's the mr coffee maybe it's because i use city water to fill up the fucking the the mr coffee to, to make it maybe it's because i make it the night before and i put it on auto and then it auto drips maybe something happens there I don't know, yeah. but if you, it if always you, tastes good. If, 
yeah, that's all that matters. But yes, if you, if you grind your beans within 15 minutes of making it, it's going to be better. Now with that, like I do get, if I have just like regular beans, I'll grind them up the night before, put them in. My wife gets up, um, you know, gets the coffee when she's, uh, when she's getting ready for work. So, you know, I don't, I may not want to get up necessarily. So I let that take care of itself and I want to make sure the coffee's ready. So, um, but if you are like, if you do a Chemex or like some sort of pour over and you have like good beans or like a good single origin bean, um, you're going to pull some tasting notes, especially if there's fruit or like a chocolate, you can definitely pull them out of there. I'm actually probably nice. better with, I'm actually, no, I wouldn't say better. I, I can pull notes out of good coffee beans. Like if it's Folgers or whatever, it just tastes like coffee. It tastes like 7-Eleven. Honestly, one of my f- favorite coffees in the world, and this is going to be so naive of me. This is going to be so naive of me, but I don't even know if you guys have them down there. It's Cumberland Farms. Do you guys do, is there Cumberland Farms? I, I is that just a New England it thing? It might be. I think it's, it's like a, it's like a chain of gas stations out here basically. Okay. And um, they do coffee uh, for a dollar. Hot coffee, <laughs> cold coffee, whatever it is, they do it for a dollar. Oh. And it's right down the road from my apartment. It's like the closest thing to my apartment. That's not more apartments or bars. And I, I um, started drinking their coffee when I lived, when I moved in here in 2019. And I really like it a lot. And I think it's kind of the same as whiskey. Like, listen, I love stag. Yeah. I love stag. It's, it's one of the be- best, if not the best barrel proof bourbon on the, on the market. But when you drink it, it's like, ah, uh, especially if you're paying secondary for it. Mm-hmm. And you're just like, oh, man, like 250 bucks. Like every just a two ounce pour, that's like $25 or whatever mm-hmm. it may be. Um, whereas when you're pouring mellow corn, North House is empty. Oh, yeah. 12 bucks. It's like 50 cents of a freaking pour. And it's like, you know, does is mellow corn quality wise as good as stag junior <laughs> if paul point. just if if paul tunes into this out of context he would punch me in the face he would um mm-hmm. does mellow corn have the same quality as stag junior no but in my heart of hearts do i feel just as good drinking mellow corn because i'm paying a fraction of the price per pour i think i'd be lying to myself if i said no you would be, you would be. And I but think that's why thing. I like Cumberland Farms coffee so much. And I'm sure there's gas stations out by you that do like a dollar coffee, any size or whatever. Oh, yeah. It just, it's, it's not like quality, but it's good enough. And it's a dollar. Yeah. There's, <clears throat> if you like, there's some beans, I mean, I'll spend 25, 30 bucks on a bag of coffee. If you have, if you're spend making, eight bucks. Well, yes, and I get it. But if you're making, like a, a cup out of an AeroPress or a Chemex, um, you can get 10 to 12 like batches out of it, like good sized cups out mm-hmm. of that. And so it's like, realistically, that's maybe $3 each one, which is less than you're going to spend at Starbucks. Yeah. It's going to be way better. True. I Very know. true. Quality does have something to do with it, obviously. Mm-hmm. But um, dude, I didn't think we were going to talk about freaking coffee, honestly. I know. See, I didn't. So we said we just let it go where it goes. Yeah, dude. And and the people who listen to this podcast for over a year now know I don't plan anything. Mm-hmm. Le- recently, I've been writing little notes because, like, all right, I want to I want to hit on the book of Boba Fett. I want to hit on Peacemaker. I want to hit on uh, NFL playoffs. Whatever it is, it's like this topics. I don't write down anything I'm going to say. For this one, I I just like me and Tony are just going to spitball it. Let's just go. We're just going to throw. I'm going to throw a fastball down the middle, 88 flat and puss. <laughs> And yeah. we're going to see if we can knock it out of the park. Let's see what um, happens. Top three whiskeys right now. Go. Oh, my God. Right now, like, are you talking like, like right newer now, type you have, things? Like, you have three. Okay, let's do it this way. The three three Any whiskeys that you have, you have, that you own. Like my favorite three. That you own right now. You're reaching for any three. What's it going to be? Number one is... Elijah Craig 18. Um, I you love pretentious douchebag. <laughs> I will be him. I love it. I absolutely love it. I, I know. Yeah. I remember it's you funny saying that. I, <clears throat> I've heard a lot of people that, that say the same thing. It's like, it's not that good. It's over oaked. 
Um, I love it. I want to have that liquid tree. And I think I, dude, I dig it. I think it's really good. Um, you know, uh, not to interrupt you, you know what you would, I just, I mentioned this because I just pulled this to the front of my thing. You know what you would really like if you like oaked? Rebel 10. Oh yeah. Okay. It is the I've oakiest whiskey I've ever had in my entire really? life. And it's like 65 bucks. I think it's kind of mm-hmm. hard to find, but yeah, I haven't seen that. I bought it on a whim because I saw people talking about it. And I was like, well, I got money. You know, I got, I got money to spend, you know, hundred um, hours. Yeah. Yeah. Something, yeah, something like I, that. I would certainly say, um, the Elijah Craig 10, 18 is for me, it's, a, it's, that's my number one. I will say that, um, judge away people, whatever. No, I don't judge. And before you go on, I want to, I got to <laughs> remember what kind it was. But I drank, um, and this was over the summer at an impromptu whiskey tasting with buddies of mine. I drank, and I'm trying to kill time as I look for the picture. So, oh, here it is. Elijah Craig, 23. Oh, I've never had that. Was it delightful? Oh, yeah. She's pretty. Oh, it was pretty. I have not had that. Um, I, I, I didn't even know it existed at the time. Yeah. I probably did, but I, it was good. But I, I like people who hate on Elijah Craig 18, I've had it and it is really good. I don't care what people say. It is super good. Is it worth 300 bucks? No, I don't know. I, 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 but... And I wouldn't pay that either, nor would I pay that. Um, I got it at retail. Very happy with it. Um, yeah, I, I would buy it again. In a heartbeat, when it's gone, yep. I'll buy it again. Um, that, and then I will say, I, I, I'll catch hate for this, but I don't care. I will say, recently, I, I got a bottle that I think might be one of the best that I've ever had. And I just love it, is the, um, the Garrison Brothers Balmeray. No. Uh, interesting. I was just hating on Garrison Brothers a little bit ago. <laughs> I think there's reason to hate on it um it's super oaky that's why i know that's why i like it it's an it's already oaky like they're small batches oaky and then this is in like a new oak barrel that's finished like it hits every mark for me that i like i want it to be it's first and foremost when you look at it's the darkest whiskey i've ever had um Mm -hmm. it is it's it's very unique um there's a uniqueness about it that i think is really cool um and it just hits you with so much wood Again, not going to buy it very often, um, but they sent me a sample of it and I was super excited about it. And I loved it so much that I spent the money to buy it. How much does it's that cost? Uh, retail, I think it was 180. Oh, yeah. That's a, that's a but, big, but retail. Again, that's a big retail price. Wow. But those two, that and the Elijah Craig are like literally the two most expensive bottles I've ever bought. Yeah, um, I believe it. I've never, I have never paid a secondary for anything, um, mm. nor, nor will I, because I feel like people who, well, I don't want to go there, but I you can. Those people. No, no, I, I know, I know your opinion on it. We've talked about it, but no, I, I agree. There's, there's uh, good things and bad things about secondary. I think there's more bad than good, but um, I agree. I think there is. <clears throat> I think there's a lot more, more than more bad than good. Um, yeah. I think the problem is some of these bottles are becoming so hard to find that it's either you pay it or you don't get it. You never get to try it. And so people are like, okay, I'll buy it. When I see bottles like on Facebook um, on some of these that it's like, like, really, you're going to charge $600 for that. I I spent $45 on that bottle and you're going to, you're selling Facebook, like Facebook groups or Facebook like ads. Yeah. Facebook groups. Uh, Dude, how Facebook groups suck. Facebook groups suck. I've talked about this on the podcast before. I hate Facebook groups. Like, I honestly, like, I want to just not be in them anymore. They take up my, like, half my Facebook feed. Yeah. And the only time I use it, <laughs> it's exposing myself right now, for real, is I post a picture. Um, <clears throat> like, I take a good picture of a bottle of whiskey, and then I'll tag who gives a dram in it. And it gets, it always gets me, like, 50 new views and, like, a bunch of new likes and listens. So, it's so pretentious of me, but whatever. That's fine. It's, it's for that to a certain extent, yeah. like it's for that. Right. But you know, we had, there was a, there was a local store here, you know, they did like a early morning thing and yeah, I got there yep. at three in the morning and ended up getting a bottle of Rock Hill farms. Super excited. 
Solid. Rock Hill Farms at retail. I've never seen it for, I mean, it was $50 and I've never seen it for under 400. And to me, that's a good, yeah. that's a good bet. That's a good, that's a good buy. And the, you know, there were the people that were in front of me that were getting some of the B tax um, that afternoon, they were up in some of the Facebook groups and being sold for literally like 10 times what they bought them for. Yeah. You know, they're buying, they're buying um, uh, William LaRue Wellers for a hundred dollars and selling it for a thousand. It's like, Again, I get That's it because yeah, you're a horrible person, I think, but like, um, I get it. Like, who am I to say that you don't have a right to go make money? But you see me struggling with this. I wasn't, I was trying to keep talking because I don't want people to like judge you for that. No, my, well, I have my, my grip strength is incredible. Like I'm, I'm not going to lie. I impress myself sometimes <laughs> with my grip strength, but, uh, um, did you just, did you just giggle to yourself when I said yeah. that? <laughs> I sure did. Um, for some reason, this old tub I'm drinking, like I don't know if it's a synthetic, the synthetic cork, it just gets stuck every single time. So I think that's why I haven't been drinking it because I've had this for well over a year. But interesting. Um. So yeah, yeah, I think we're in agreement with 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 that. I hate Facebook groups, and I always will with a burning passion. But you listed two. What's your third one? Uh, that's tough, man. Like I don't. Um, I don't have a bottle, but I would say that, that Russell's Reserve 13 was incredible. Um, that, that was, for one, I think it's well worth the hype. Um, that's mm-hmm. the thing is, I, I think, I thought the Elijah Craig 18 and the Balmeray are worth the hype. I tried the Cowboy. It's worth the hype. I think it's that good. Mm-hmm. Um, I see why people don't buy it with the price point, but it's, I think it's that good of whiskey. Um, I, don't, I don't know. Like, Stag, Stag Jr. was another one. Like, I felt like it was really worth the hype. And I finally got mm-hmm. a bottle of it. I'd never had one. And when I had it, I was like, gosh, that is so good. I know, right? Um, oh, it's, it's to me, it's worth the hype. Yeah. Um, you know, like, and, and again, everyone's going to hate on Blanton's. And, and yes, I don't think it's like the end all be all of whiskey. Um, but again, who doesn't want to have a bottle of Blanton's? I've got yeah. bottles that are, I've got one open, I've got three unopened. So people will trade for them. And I'll trade if you want to trade for them. Um, you know, but I, but, but I think that I think the the stag junior I think is well worth it. Um, you know, if you're going to go with like something that's more readily available, um, mm. like Eagle Rare, I love um, Russell's Reserve Ten Year. I, I was going to say I, I I would assume you would say Russell's Reserve Ten. That's my go-to. If I go, if that's like mm. if there's like a daily for me, it would be the Russell's Ten. Yeah. Um, I I love the Russell's Ten. I think it's I think it's incredible. Um, if I'm going to go with a like a high proof that I really want to just sip on. It's the, that I can find is rare breed. Yeah. Love yep. Rare I agree. I agree. I just killed my, um, I just killed my uh, Russell's reserve 10 year last week, I think. And I got to pick up another bottle. The beautiful thing is I can go anywhere and it's going to be like yeah. 35 to 40 bucks. It's great. Yep. We can find it someplace here for $29. And I, and I think yeah, it's insane. I think it's so good. And like the Russell's 13, I was seventh in line and they had six bottles. Um, and a buddy of mine gave me a sample and I thought it was really good. Uh, yeah. but now again, you're seeing people put stuff up on secondary prices, secondary sites. I'm like, why in the world are you putting that up for $500? I mean, why are it's you ridiculous. buying it for $500? Yeah. Well, these people, $500 to them is $75 to us. You know, it's like, now, ah. I need, but I need to find out what some of these people do. Cause when you start to see like th- these guys that are uh, smoke wagon, like sm- some of the smoke wagons that people are mm-hmm. buying, like it's unreal what they're paying for. Yeah. And I, I just want to know, what do you do that you can go ahead and just casually drop two grand on two bottles that are really like, like a, a, a quarter of that retail yeah. wise. I got to get uh we're having smoke wagon on bourbon with friends, but this, this is recording on February 8th and we're having them on next week. So you're going to have fun with send that. us. Yeah, no, I've, I've, um, actually, I don't even think I've ever talked to them before. I've, I only, I've ever had the small batch. I don't know if we're getting samplers or not, but, um, I've only ever had the small batch with smoke wagon and I enjoy it. Nothing, nothing mm-hmm. like I, but I'm looking forward to that podcast. Um, he's a lot of fun. He, I think he's doing it for the right reasons. Um, yeah. I think he's got a th- cool thing going and he's killing it. Um, I love the small batch. I think it's terrific. I like their straight bourbon. I, yeah. What I like is that they've got like their layers of 
the straight, the small batch, and then the uncut unfiltered. Yeah. Um, and then you've got the other ones that are way up here that are hand signed by Jesus that you're never going to get your hands on for <laughs> less than, you know, 12 times retail, whatever that is. Um, but, you know, I've got one of the rare and limited. It's, it's really good. Um, I've got a couple of the, the uncut unfiltered. Um, I think it's really, really good stuff. So you're going to have fun. Yeah. He's a cool dude. Yeah. I'm, I'm, look, I'm very much looking for that episode. And that same day, I don't know if you've ever had, it might not even be in your area yet, but Rye 3 Whiskey. I'm sure you've seen them on Instagram. I've seen them. Yeah. I've never had it. Yeah. It's, um, Rye, it's a hundred proof Rye Whiskey, uh, finished in rum cast. So it's essentially like Angel's Envy Rye, but mm. I think it's way better. If that's, shout out to Karthik but over there, um, at Rye 3 at Phenomenal Spirits. If you can find a bottle of that, Tony, I swear yeah. to God, it'll change your life. It's okay. for, I'm not a rye guy, but this rye whiskey, and I think it's a combination of the blend that they're using plus the, um, you know, finishing it in the, in the rum yeah. cast. Cause he also produces a, an, an award-winning rum. Ron is oh, okay. um, it's, oh, it's life-changing. It's life-changing. So I, I'm I've, a big fan of it. <laughs> I've got more into rye lately. Um, I was the same way. I don't like it. A friend of mine who I love dearly, he brought me a bottle of dad's hat and I tried it. It's from Pennsylvania. And it was, uh, it was the worst thing I've ever had uh, <laughs> in, in my entire life. And I think I kind wow, of, that's saying a lot. You've been, yeah. you've been on this earth for a while. So I know you've had some shitty shit. <clears throat> Very true. Um, mm. That was the worst. I hated wow. it. And um, we had um, Brian from Sagamore Spirit on, and mm -hmm. he sent me a bunch of different ones, and it was unbelievable. Yeah. Um, their rye is good. Their toasted, their double oak is good. Like, it's so good. And so yeah. I started looking at some others, like Michter's is a nice, like, gentle rye, Rittenhouse. Yep. Um, you know, like, rare breed rye was so Pikesville is a great rye. Pikesville is good. I hated, I, I, don't, I don't know, I hated I was too excited about the rare breed rye. And then when I had it, I didn't like it. Uh, so I was this is a surprise, man. Yeah. Yeah. I just didn't, I, I was hoping for more because I love rare breed, uh, but the rides didn't do it for me. It's hard. It's hard to find a good rye for me. I, there's not too many I prefer, but this rye three is, is great. And um, I, I can't think off the top of my head a rye that I like more mm. than that. Like, I think I gave it like a 9.2 on my podcast or something like really? that. It was a high, it was a hitter. Anything above nine is a hitter. So, what, um, um, what craft distilleries do you fancy? Um, I would say my, my favorite one right now is Penelope. Yeah. Good. Um, Mike and Danny over there are just awesome. You've had them on the podcast. Yeah. On your podcast. They're, they're, they're just, they're great guys. I love them. And I still stay in contact with them and <laughs> I'm not too far from New Jersey. So, you know, one of these days uh, I know that, um, Paul is going to come up here hopefully sometime soon. And I want to go down to New Jersey to, to hang out with them and, and maybe do an in-person podcast or something like that. Cause they're just like fun to talk to. Um, they're great. Which one, what I do you all, like from them? What's your, what, what have you had that you've really enjoyed from there? Um, I have, uh, my favorite's the toasted, the toasted yeah. finish. I have, oh, that's in the back. I, I, I think I have, um, I know that their toasted is, is, is indicated what kind of batch it is. Mm -hmm. I forgot what batch I have, but we sipped it on the podcast live and it was fantastic. And the be best part about it was I didn't like it at first. Yeah. When I first opened Penelope toasted finish. I did not like it. And then I let it sit. And I sipped it live on the podcast. And I remember like inside me, I was feeling like, man, I, cause I was nervous. I was going to be like, I just don't, I, I was, I was like, I don't want to tell the owners of this company that I don't yeah, like right? their whiskey, but I'm not going to lie. <laughs> and, but then I, I like something switched in me. I sipped it and I was like, wow, this is actually like a lot better than I remember. Cause I remember the nose was fantastic. The, the palate was pretty good, but the finish sucked, which was what I remembered it being. And when I drank it again, everything, everything was, was rock solid. So um, yeah, I'd probably say they're toast. I I've just found their light whiskey. Um, I have not had that. Is it delicious? I haven't had it. I, okay. I saw it um, this past weekend at my, at my, my whiskey spot, but it was like, it's like upper nineties mm. in terms of price. 
so it's an expensive bottle and um i want it and i probably will buy it just to support them sure but um not right now your boy still what? gotta pay off a credit card what city are you in in connecticut i'm from stonington now okay. i'm in westerly rhode island so um okay it's right on the border it's right on the border gotcha. of connecticut so it's uh not far okay so there's yeah, it's always funny when you say like your whiskey spot. I, I always like hearing like, because there's not a lot of whiskey spots out West Phoenix. There's a lot of really mm-hmm. good spots like East side of Phoenix, but right where mm-hmm. I'm at, there's not very good ones. But because we're going to be close there, we're going to be in Worcester, Mass. So yeah, I know we had talked about that. And whenever yeah. you're when you're here, sure I forgot. Out. Yeah, I'll 100% I'll come out. One thousand uh, percent I'll come out. Think, I was just thinking that, but yeah, like there, I think there's some really great craft distilleries. I think that's something that like, like a lot of people may somewhat be sleeping on because they're chasing like Buffalo Tray stuff or finding mm-hmm. like, again, like something, some of the smoke wagons that are like being highly yeah. sought after um, <clears throat> or even like a, like a Penelope Rosé that was really hot for a while. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think there's, there's so many great craft distilleries that I think those are, those ones are a lot of fun for me. And to go along with, uh, Penelope, uh, phenomenal spirits or Rye Three. They're probably the craft brand that I, I just I I I am close with Karthik, who's the owner, and he's like I I just will always support them, and it helps that I freaking love their whiskey. So probably Penelope and Rye Three are probably my two favorite craft distilleries. We gotta get that Rye uh, Three to hook your boy up then. I'll t- I'll text him. I'll text him to come on your podcast. He'll come on. He'll yeah. fuck, he'll love it. All right. I'll text him tonight or maybe not tonight because it's kind of late here, but tomorrow I'm actually going to see him. He's going to be in Connecticut um, later this month in February. So I'm we're going to go have dinner and drinks. Let's make that happen. Um, Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm in on the, I'm in on the Penelope. Um, I, I love blue note. Um, I just picked this up. I was thinking, I was thinking about cracking this, but I didn't because I never had it. Yeah. Oh, open that dude. It's delicious. I'm gonna I'm gonna open it on the podcast. I'm gonna review it. You know, like I have my first okay, okay. like do an uncorking on the podcast because I don't do that very often. Dude, but it's, it's delicious because Kelly yeah. told me about that when it first had come out, uh, or before it had come out. She told me when it was like coming soon, um, and I was like looking for it. And then all of the like better looking handsome guys that have more followers had bottles first. And then once it got down to like my tier, um, I got a bottle. Okay. But um, dude it is really good and the juke joint yeah. for 30 like and i again love penelope but if i'm going to compare penelope their straight bourbon and and the juke joint for the same mm-hmm. price it's blue notes winning that for me i think it's yeah, so I'm, good i think i remember you talking about blue note and i saw this at a store it was like 45 bucks and i don't even know if that's good price or not but i was like you know what i actually remember thinking i'm pretty sure tony likes blue note and i trust tony because a man with that great of a mustache does not lie look at sam elliott we can't yeah we can't he's not allowed. He, yeah it's he's it's there's something like anatomically wrong with you guys you can't lie that's what it's for it's to stop you from lying it's like a it's like a dream catcher like an indian exactly dream catcher it, it catches the nightmares and it doesn't let them come out yep i agree your mustache your mustache is an indian dream catcher Mm-hmm. I, I'll tell you the other one. Sorry, my thought mustache. Um, <laughs> Spears of French Lick. Yeah. <laughs> they have one called the Maddie Gladden, and it's Maddie. unbelievable. Okay. Their distiller guy, Alan Bishop, is potentially the most interesting man in the world. Um, wow. Type raise super, from you. Su- dude, super cool guy, um, super knowledgeable. And they make really good whiskey. Get you've got to get spirits of French Lick on the on your show, and get Alan Bishop because he's phenomenal. Yeah, I'm gonna reach out. I don't know if we've had uh, Blue Note on Bourbon with Friends, but I'll, I'll have him on Who Gives a Dram too, um, because, like I said, I like I like I'm way more into craft now, especially since I talked with Karthik and Rye Three. That was like the first mm-hmm. craft I ever distillery I ever talked to, and and like just hearing it firsthand it kind of got me down the rabbit hole of craft and that's when i got into penelope and now i'm kind of looking at like a three chord i'm a big three chord guy as well my my whiskey spot my whiskey spot came out with a single barrel and it is 
as the Italians say. You know what I'm saying? I do know what we say. Um, yeah. You know, one of the first ones I had on was Breckenridge. Uh, out of yeah. Colorado. Yeah. Brian Nolt, their owner, was a doctor. And he decided that he's going to start making whiskey. And that's always like Naturally. my question. That's always my question to people. Is like, again, we've all done it. We've all watched Karate Kid and said, hey, I should be a karate guy. Or you watch Top Gun and you're like, I'm gonna fly planes. I'm gonna be a pilot. Yeah. I'm gonna be a pilot. Yeah. You watch, you watch Man of Steel, you're like, <laughs> I think I'm gonna be Superman. I can do that. And <laughs> I, and like he was doctoring and then said, No, no, I'm gonna make bourbon. And yep. that's always like such a cool thing for me when I talk to people where I go, Okay, listen, like, what was the moment for you when you said, like, I'm going to, I'm gonna risk it? Like, I know shooters shoot, but like I'm gonna risk it, and we're gonna try this out, and we're gonna we're gonna give this a go. Yeah. Um, the guys at Bear Creek, like same thing, Boulder Spirits, like uh, mm-hmm. a lot of cool. Actually, Colorado's got a lot of good whiskey, but two ninety one, um, two ninety one, two ninety one. But yeah. it's like, what what's that moment where you said, like, I'm going to jump in, I'm gonna quit what I'm doing, doctoring, yeah. and like I'm gonna become a whiskey person. You know, like that's just a cool thing for me. It's kind of like Doctor Strange. He was doctoring, then he became a wizard. Yeah, the doctoring know? is the correct way to work work so to say that. Yeah, no, no, that, that's if you look in the dictionary, that's doctoring. You're doctoring. Absolutely. Um I want to know. I have I have one more thing I want to talk about. Um, I don't even know how long we're running right now, but I don't really care. Yeah, I'm having whatever. a good time. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Um so we talked about baseball, we talked about whiskey. I am very and those are two things that I'm kind of most passionate about. I played baseball. Uh-huh until uh junior college i played a little bit at junior college here um and when i was 17 playing against 21 year olds and i knew i probably wasn't going to play a lot i stopped sure. so um kind of regret it kind of don't whatever but um baseball, baseball i've always been passionate about, about baseball um whiskey obviously but podcasting <laughs> Yeah. Podcasting is something that I started before who gives a dram with my brothers. So we had, had a podcast called life in the basement. We still kind of do it, but not for a while. Um, and that got me into the process of producing content, producing a brand kind of, kind of engaging with followers and, and building that, that repertoire of, of content and, and uh, episodes and kind of an overall vibe. Yeah is is that kind of how you feel about podcasting in general or do you just want to have a platform to kind of you know talk with these awesome people and record your thoughts and have it out there or do you really want to make like um uh barrel proof baseball is that something that like you want to grow into something else or is it kind of just like we're doing it it's here it's successful and we can we can just talk with good people like yes to all of them, but also no. Um, it, so there's a phenomenon in baseball. I can go on this. I can get on a soapbox if you want, but um, <laughs> you going on a there, monologue right now? Yeah, I, I could. This diatribe. Um, there, there's a thing in baseball right now, which I don't, I don't know if it's happening in other sports as much as it is in baseball, but like people have found that in baseball, if you put on Twitter, your thoughts of baseballing, um, that people in high places are going to see your thoughts on baseball. And they're going to think that you are a genius and know all there is to know about that topic. And you're going to get a job. Unfortunately, people started getting jobs because of what they're putting on Twitter. Um, I personally, I think it's horse shit. I, I, to me, like the, the thing that makes coaches good is you go make players good. Your teams yeah. win games. Your team, your players yeah. move up to higher levels. It's just what it is. Um, put, putting out content when, when you have to deal with another person is neat. Um, it sounds good, but I have all the time in the world to put together a PowerPoint, put together a presentation, put my thoughts into play and then edit it and format it how I want and put it on Twitter for people to go, Hey, that looks really, really cool. Like that handsome mustached man is really knowing his things. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's not relevant in the sense that you have to fix something or address something 
that's that's wrong in real time and do that while dealing with a person dealing with somebody who is ha- they have an ego uh, we all have mm. an ego you know so so like i'm off it i think it's uh um i think it's played out and it's it happens like crazy in baseball and it's disgusting to me mm. um not to say that there's no, no it's disgusting but what i found was like you also have this side of it where as much as I hate it and as much as I think it's such a easy way out um, from having to be successful and what we actually view as successful as coaches, um, there is the other side of that, which I equally, as much as the disdain towards that one side, I also respect it because when you put yourself out there, you are opening yourself up to judgment. You're opening yourself up to ridicule. Um, you're opening yourself up to like the keyboard warriors telling you that you suck and you don't know what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. And for me, it was more or less like, okay, I need to put myself out there. I, I'm not baseball. I don't care about the baseball side because I'm gonna let baseball take care of itself. Like, yeah. I think my resume speaks for itself. Um, I've had plenty of players that have gone on and played at, at higher levels. I've coached teams that have won. I've got plenty of rings. Uh, mm-hmm. I want more rings. I think they're great. And rings think, are awesome. They're great. I love it. I, yeah. I love my world series ring. Um, but uh, I, <laughs> just I, a slight flex. <laughs> how about that? Um, <laughs> but like, I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that in baseball because I also don't feel like my job is to coach everybody on the internet in baseball. My job is to coach my guys. Yeah. And so my way of putting myself out there was through whiskey, which was something that was like not native to me. It's not mm-hmm. like, I didn't grow up with my grandpappy drinking whiskey on the front porch. Um, you know, my, my parents weren't big drinkers, um, I just started to like it and I started yeah. to like the history. I started to like the process, you know, I started liking to, to educate myself and, and everything about it. And I liked the people that were involved in the industry. And I liked my conversations with them. So mm. with that, that was like my way during COVID of, um, like kind of putting myself out there, like, like taking a chance, doing something different, challenging myself. Um, you know, I had like my blog on medium that I would write about it and post it. And there's like that, Oh shit moment where you're hitting post or send and you've just written like this thousand word you know thing about (laughs) yeah and and you're you're posting it Mm -hmm. for people to say like you suck um so there is something to that because i'm not gonna do that in baseball like baseball that's a that's a performance-based arena and i'm gonna go out and do my thing um yep but i but in, in whiskey like that was a real challenge for me and it's something that i've really enjoyed so it's like, I need to educate myself so I don't sound like a jackass. I need to connect myself to the right people. So I'm talking to people who matter. Um, I need to know the right questions to ask. Um, and I need to like hear also the other side from like the fanboys because we are ultimately fanboys and we are not mm-hmm. in the industry per se. Um, we're just fans of the industry, you know? Yeah. So when you're talking to people that are in the industry, it's like, if I'm talking to a baseball fan, my knowledge of what's actually happening in baseball is different than the person who is on the outside looking in. It's not a bad thing. It's just what it is. So when I'm having conversations with Jackie Zykin about whiskey, like I know I'm not in the same realm as her. I'm covering what she's doing. You know what I mean? Because like you're a, so you're a professional in your industry and mm -hmm. you are talking to professionals in this other industry you're very passionate about. That's Mm -hmm. actually really, that's really intriguing because right. you have this super knowledge of baseball mm-hmm. and now on all the aspects of it, but you talk to Jackie Zykin, who, um, by the way, is, is leading our tasting at the uh, Kentucky bourbon ball on April 23rd, get your ticket soon. Bourbon with friends. Um, well done. She's a professional in her industry. Mm-hmm. She knows everything about whiskey. She's <laughs> super knowledgeable and super she's knowledgeable. badass. She's awesome. Yep. And like, is it because you are, and I, I'm not, I don't mean to boost your ego here, but I'm gonna, you are a handsome mustached man, but oh, you've right. basically reached, you're, you're at the pinnacle of, uh, with coaching in baseball. You're about, you're, you're there. You're, 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 you're Close. a professional, Hopefully. you're a professional baseball coach. Mm-hmm. Do you find it interesting? Because I listen I listened to your interviews, obviously, and like the passion that you relay and you can almost tell that like, you're really, you're listening hard. 
sometimes you get like crazy eyes. Like sometimes you don't blink for five yeah. minutes. I don't know if you know that or not, but yeah. you don't, you, I timed it once you didn't blink for four minutes and 38 seconds. And I almost submitted it to, uh, to Guinness book of world records, but do you like talking to professionals in this other industry that you're very passionate about because you're a professional in your own industry? I love it. And I, I love it because I remember talking to Jackie and she made a comment and she didn't, by no means did she mean anything by it, but she says like something, something to the effect of us in the industry. And like the way I, when, when right when she said that, like that hit me like a absolute ton of bricks. And I'm like, I'm not in the industry. Um, mm -hmm. And, and, I, and I don't like pretend like I am. I don't try to be yeah. by any means. But, you know, for us, like we're, we're not in the industry. Like we are like fans of the industry and we're watching it. But like we don't go to work every day and go through the process of like having to having anything to do with the barrels, having anything to do with the tasting or, or what's mm -hmm. being bottled. Um, you know, we are like literally uh, playing a small role in hopefully talking about it and maybe getting people interested. We have a yeah. Facebook group that I'd started when I started my podcast. Some guys are really deep into the whiskey game. Some are brand new. Um, but the most fun part is when you talk to somebody about whiskey, you post it up there and someone's like, Hey, I bought one of those bottles from that, that company you were, you're talking about. And mm -hmm. I really liked it. Like, that's cool. Um, yeah. that part's fun. That's rewarding. That's exciting. Um, and it's fun hearing people's stories. Like, when you, when you talk to people that are in other industries, I don't get excited to hear their story about their journey and what they're doing. Um, yeah. Baseball does it for me. Whiskey does it for me because a lot of these people were either working in bars when they were younger. And then it became like, Hey, I'm going to get serious about this. Not, not to say it's not serious. Like when you're maybe a bartender, or you're working in bars or you're a brand ambassador or you're working at a distillery, but like there's, there's so many different layers to like this industry um, mm -hmm. that I think any of us on our side, yourself, me, Paul, um, anybody, I don't care if it's bourbon pursuit. I don't care if it's, you know, anybody that, that has an Instagram account that posts pictures of their whiskey. Um, mm -hmm. it's just something that we are all enthralled with and entertained by, and we yeah. enjoy and having conversations with the people that are doing it day to day. Like that's a lot of fun. Yep. Um, and again, like there are people that can definitely sit there and nose their whiskey with their pinky up and know that that is absolutely a pancake on a Tuesday morning, um, you know, when, when it's cloudy out and I'm like, yeah, it <laughs> smells kind of fruity and I like it. I'm going to drink it. And then like teach their own, but yeah. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's, that's super interesting. The way you connected that with, you know, talking to professionals when you have this Uber knowledge in your own industry, um, I'm sure you come at it with a, a totally different appreciation because of where you're at in, in your professional life. That's good. That's cool, man. That's super it's, cool. It is different. Like when I talked to, I've had a couple of baseball, actually I had a few baseball guys on early on. I haven't done it lately. I need to, I'm, and you guys had Matt Davidson on. With yeah. Bowman I was going to say, have you had Matt on? No, uh, he's going to, um, we've talked, we, yeah. were, we were both with the Dodgers last year. Um, and I got to meet him probably once or twice and he's he a was great just, dude. Uh, incredible incredible yeah. he's a the best he's when you when he's somebody you root for and and the cool thing was oh. like i was coaching high school when he was in high school um and i remember hearing about him because he was in our area and like he was a superstar and then you meet him mm -hmm. you, everyone finds out like he's into bourbon um and he's just as cool as um you'd heard he is you know so like that part made it really awesome um but yeah <laughs> when you're it, it, I think it goes along with anything. Like if you're in an industry and you're talking to somebody outside of your industry, um, you're going to have questions that somebody who's in that industry is probably not going to have. Um, something yep. that seems very rudimentary to somebody that's there is exciting to us. Just like somebody that would ask me questions, um, which I've been asked plenty of times by people like, Hey, what is it like doing this? And um, you just kind of answer questions like, Oh, that's cool. Like you just kind of do it but you don't realize that to somebody else that's not in that realm of like work that yeah. what you're talking about is actually really, really cool. Um, and they, and something that those people get really excited about. So like you kind of have to put yourself in other people's positions to understand like where they're at and then remind yourself like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not where they are. You know, I'm just kind of talking about what they are. So, um, and, and this is something I've never, never done, never put myself out there in this sense. Um, I've never like 
thought about having a podcast. It was just something that kind of a friend of mine at work one day, we were sitting out in the outfield talking and he's like, you should talk about something with like bourbon and baseball. I was like, yeah, let's do it. And it's kind of came to well, me. Dude, you're, you're very good at it. And I'm not just saying that, like I've listened to plenty of your podcasts. I try to catch up on the ones I haven't listened to so often as I can. And they're awesome. I love them. And I, and I, I appreciate it. it helps. It helps that I love you as a guy, but your podcast yes. is great. Um, and uh, uh, I recommend everyone go listen to it. Um, I'll, I'll put your, your links down in the show notes below, but tell the people, Tony, where, where they can find you. Uh, all over. Like I, I try to do the TikTok thing. Have you gotten to TikTok? Bro, I went stupid viral on TikTok the other day. God, I, you know, I did one, <laughs> I did one and um, it was like the collector check, you know, like you're showing different bottles and stuff like that. And that one got a ton <laughs> of views, you know? Yeah. Um, but like other ones, Dude, what's your make. TikTok? I'll go follow you right. I'll go follow you live I, on this podcast. Barrel, barrel, barrel proof baspball. Barrel proof baseball. That's my problem. Yeah. Could have assumed that it's my fault. Yeah, because I do it for that. I don't no, no, no. I'm sorry. It's not. It's well, the title is, but it's actually T Cap 19, like everything else I've done. Um sort of kind of really confusing, but it's all good. I know, right? Like it's under my name, <clears throat> but the title is barrel proof baseball. Oh, you follow me, bro. I'm sorry. <laughs> wow, this my is bad. Awkward. This is my so bad. Weird. I, I, um, I big timed you. I big timed the big leaguer. <laughs> must, must be nice. Um, but yeah, at the beginning of COVID, like my, my wife and I, like we got, both got on there and um, like she was doing some of the dances and stuff like that. And we were having a, a good old time with it. And then I found bourbon TikTok and I'm like, this is awesome. Um, it's probably, it's, yeah, it's cool. It's fun. Um, but yeah, like Instagram, you know, I got my own is, what's my own? Was mine TCAP 19? Yeah. Or, yeah. No, it's just... ni- 19 t cap with two p's um or the other one's uh, barrel proof baseball yep um yeah like that and twitter and facebook all those good things everywhere everywhere don't follow barrel me on twitter baseball. thinking you're don't, don't follow me on twitter thinking you're gonna get any baseball advice you're not <laughs> i'm gonna i'm going to um uh hit you up when i was coming up uh, the big debate for me in my group was, uh, I forgot what the first type of hitting was called linear hitting versus it rotational. was something hitting versus rotational hitting. And I had a coach that always taught, um, I don't even know if it's called linear hitting, whatever, whatever. And then most people were doing rotational hitting because that's how David Ortiz and everyone hits. Yeah. And I, there was like a huge debate on all that stuff. My advice for everyone, and this, I could go off on a whole tangent. I'm not going to, we're probably way over on time right now, but like for anyone coming up, uh, you know, that's maybe has like a, a, a young son who wants to get into baseball. Tell your son, first of all, get one, get one hitting coach. Don't go around and, and exp- I guess you should go around and experiment, but Find someone that you trust if you're gonna if you're gonna if you're gonna pay for for hitting lessons. And um I found out too late in the game that there was one guy who I'm sure you know. Um he's the hitting coach for the Orioles, Ryan Fuller. I don't know if you know him or not. Not personally, but through Instagram or Twitter or something. Yeah. He is like I've known him since I was a kid. And I oh cool. He is like one of the best guys that I've ever met. But um, he, I found out too late that he was like my, my only hitting coach. And then I had a catching coach who caught for the Rangers trip uh, in triple a, you might know this guy too, Zach Zaneski. Mm, I don't know him. He caught triple a for a bit uh, for the Texas Rangers. I, I, uh-huh. He hasn't played in a few years, I don't think, but um, so I had my hitting coach and my catching coach when I was younger, younger, I would go into hitting like, I was going to a bunch of different people. My advice is for pe- for kids, obviously you want your coaches, you want your specifications, you want that person that's going to guide you in the right direction, but don't try so hard at it. I tried too hard to be a good hitter and I was always an average hitter. I was lucky that I was a, I was a very good catcher uh, defensively, but when it comes to hitting in baseball and you don't, you can, you don't have to give your opinion on this if you don't want to, but my opinion is the more you think about it, the more you try to be good at it, yeah. the worse you'll be at it. And I, and I would, I would take it 
Yes, you're right. Um, the problem that is out there is kids. Kids need to be be kids. Go play baseball. Like when I when I I'm right. I'm literally writing a book, trying to about this, and from like a player's perspective, like for parents, like like if you win the eight U World title, like who cares? Your life is not going to change. It's not going you, to You're better. telling me my my um nine year old little leagues uh district title doesn't mean anything? Zero. It's zero. <laughs> it was a it was a nice memory for you, but that's it. And even like the kids that are playing on national television uh, at the Little League World Series, like that's great if you're 12, but like how long can you sit on that? You know, like, hey, I played in the Little League World Series. Like it's cool. Like I was the valedictorian of summer school. Like it doesn't like ultimately in the, in the grand <laughs> scheme of life, it doesn't matter. And, and it's great to talk about at the time, but like for parents, that's the biggest issue. Like parents are the reason kids quit. It's not because of the game. Yeah. It's because parents. So like sit in the stands, watch them, watch them, let yeah. them go play. Like, let them like own their failure. Let them own their success. You know, like if he does well, like let, like put the attention on them. If they fail, it's like, Hey man, like I know you did the best you can and, and tomorrow's a new day and Hey, you might do good. You might suck. Like, I don't know what's going to happen um yeah do it and that's, working, that's like... exactly exactly that's that's and i'm not even i'm not even really necessarily talking about the parents uh, you know obviously luckily my my parents were the furthest thing from that they you know but i'm talking so more about the kid himself i tried to break down my swing in every single aspect. Mm -hmm. And that's what Ryan does as a coach. But he'll also say, dude, just go up to the plate and swing the fucking bat. Yeah. Like at the end of the day, that's what you got to do. And when he told me that, I remember my, my last year in Legion, I had a really good year at the plate, not just behind the plate. And um, it's because I just didn't care. It's like, all right, well, if I strike out right now, who, get, like, who gives a drag, yeah, it, you know? It, get, it gets to a point where it's like, hey, can you... Like, if you're my player, can I make you feel good about yourself and feel like you're like, again, like that's the top of the art of coaching is if I can be like, Connor, like, dude, your swing looks really good. I mean, I know you haven't been having a lot of success lately, but like your swing looks good. It's coming around. Like it's going to happen. Keep going, keep working. Like, Hey, I, I've got all the faith in the world in you. And if that yeah. kid gets in the box and it's like, man, like my coach really thinks I'm good. Like he thinks I can go compete and like, like I can do it. it. It dude, like you increase your probability of success, you know, like the Just last use, thing in the world yeah. that a kid needs, like, especially a young kid is to hear it from his coach in the third base box and his other coach in the dugout. And then mm -hmm. mom's telling him to get his elbow up and dad's telling him to swing at strikes. It's like, dude, you're not helping. I promise you, you're not helping. Yeah. Um, the youth baseball thing, the phenomenon is just, fascinating to me it is it is just you saying that like hey connor your swing's coming around good i feel like i could go step in the box right now right I've like a glass you, and a half of whiskey your confidence that you exuded to me when i said that to you was just earth shattering um and i i feel like there's a double waiting somewhere in there probably probably give me i got really good at waiting on outside pitches uh, in the in the later half of my storied career there you, you go. know um one of those books back over here is about you. Uh, is that one there? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, no. Yeah. I, is that yeah no, that's it. That's Absolutely. that. Yeah. That's, that's the story of, um, of, of baseball and beards. I wrote that. Nice. It's a good book. I wrote that. Yeah, no, I well, I hope so. It's on your top shelf. Well, well I can sign it for you. I'll send it to you. I'll bring it to Worcester. Yeah. Bring it to Worcester. I do. I can't wait for you to come to Worcester. That's going to be fun. Yeah, it's gonna be a blast. I'm so excited. I'm I'll not, drive up, I'll, watch a game, have a whiskey with you, and just drive yeah. home after. I don't care. I'll have, I'll have some family around there, and because uh, all my my fa my whole family on my dad's side's out in Rhode Island, and so yeah, we'll uh, I'm sure I'll see some of them out there. Where in Rhode Island? Uh, Warren, a lot lot in Warren, um, mm -hmm. some in Providence. Uh, got oh, dude, that's, some, that's nothing. That's a 35 minute drive. That's what I'm saying, dude. The 35 so minute drive. We have to go see the fam. It's been a while. Yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. We'll we'll talk about that more. But for this episode, you guys, this has been a long. This has probably been my longest episode, to be honest. I don't know how long it's been, but it's been pretty fucking long. Um, 
Whatever. It was fun, Tony, though. And if, I, if, I, if I'm going to have the longest episode with anyone, it's going to be with you because I, I want, feel like I want to be your longest. You're my longest, and you're also my first. Wink. Even better. Anyways, uh, everybody, thank you for tuning into this special episode of Who Gives a Dram uh, with uh, with Tony here. Barrel Proof, uh, Barrel Proof Baseball Podcast. Go search them up on there. I promise you, you will enjoy it. So go for search sure. them up on there. Um, as always, you can find me on all social media, Who Gives a Dram. Uh, follow us over at Bourbon with Friends as well. Um, make sure you're subscribed. iTunes, Spotify, wherever else podcasts are played now and YouTube as well. And um, yeah, that's going to do it. So until next time, you guys, well, Tony, thanks again, man, for coming thanks, on. Buddy. I thanks, buddy. Thanks for having me. Yeah. You're very, you're very welcome. Any, you're invited anytime you want to come on. Your and gentleman. yeah, thank you very much. A gentleman and a scholar. Or a gentleman. Yeah, you're right. And anyways, you guys, but uh, thank you again for listening. And always remember, uh, whiskey's the water of life. So let's start living. My hands are tired from paying my bills. I'm staring at a bottle, I'm aiming to kill. The weeks passing by and the seasons to change. And I'm playing my song, trying to make me a name. People say as they walk out the bar The kids gone places, maybe even a star but They don't play country down in Nashville today Just the same chord progression With nothing to say What happened to country? Three chords and the truth And who's gonna step up? Fill their big shoes Writing songs about outlaws Singing all night And songs that'll make A grown man cry Auto tune now down on Music Row. True country died there a long time ago. No, they don't play Waylon on the boulevard, but they'll do anything to be rock stars. What happened to country? Three chords and the truth. And who's gonna step up? Fill their big shoes, writing songs about our loss, singing all night and songs that'll make a grown man cry. hope for us yet cause there's millions of people who cannot forget the way Johnny Cash brought a tear to their eyes or how Marty Robbins painted Texas skies what happened to country the cards and the truth and who's gonna step up and fill their big shoes writing songs about outlaws Singing all night and songs that'll make a grown man cry. A grown man cry. A grown man cry.
cry I won't let country die